In this video, we're going to focus on how to interpret a urine culture and sensitivity report. We're going to start out by looking first at the culture itself and taking an example culture report. On the top half, you have the culture, and then on the bottom half, you have the sensitivity. If we isolate the culture portion, there are four basic things to look at. We're going to focus on the fourth uh, parameter here, and this is the organism, in this case it's E. coli, and then the colony count or the quantity that has grown in the period of 24 hours in this example. And that's colony forming units per ml. Let's take a look at another example here. In this example there are two different organisms, E. coli and Enterococcus faecalis, and the colony count for each of these is different. So how important is the colony count when interpreting a culture report? Each of these has a different volume, or excuse me, a different concentration of organisms that are growing. 10 to the 5 is 5 total zeros, or 100,000 colony forming units. And obviously, um, 10 to the 3rd and 10 to the 4th are less than that. So does the colony count matter? Is it reflective of the magnitude of the infection? According to UpToDate, the standard definition of a positive urine culture is greater than 100,000 colony forming units per ml, together with pyuria. And the pyuria you're going to get from the leukocyte count or the leukocyte esterase lighting up on the dip. In those other two examples where the concentration was less than 10 to the 5th or 100,000 CFUs, you still could conclude that there was a urinary tract infection if the clinical presentation supported that. Now let's look at a sensitivity table. So in the sensitivity table, there's a list of antibiotics that have been tested. And on the next column, there's a list of numbers, which we'll talk about. And then finally, there's a column that includes either S or R, and as you may imagine, S means sensitive and R means resistant. So what do these numbers mean? That's a very common question that comes up. And if you look at the bottom here, you'll notice that there's a very important sentence. The numerical portion of the MIC, the minimal inhibitory concentration, is specific for that antibiotic and does not represent a relationship between the potential efficacy of one antibiotic over another. What this means is that these numbers, they don't tell you anything about selecting one of these antibiotics. An 8 is not greater than or less than a 16 in terms of sensitivity or efficacy. And we're going to talk about how to choose an antibiotic in a few moments. Let's take a look at another example with two organisms. Here we have the E. coli as organism number one and the Enterococcus as organism number two. And the challenge when you have multiple organisms is to find a medication, an antibiotic that is going to be effective for both organisms. So here you'll notice that ampicillin, uh, the E. coli is resistant to ampicillin, but the Enterococcus is sensitive. So you'll need to find one that's sensitive for both. And here nitrofurantoin is going to, looks like it's going to be effective because it's going to be, uh, the E. coli is going to be sensitive to it and so is the enterococcus. Okay, so now let's move over to talk about the treatment and choosing one antibiotic over another. Obviously, there are a variety of different considerations and the clinical context is very important. Here is a small list of things that you may consider. As far as efficacy is concerned, obviously, we'll consult the sensitivity table. But you also want to look at uh, various secondary resources, and UpToDate is a good one. UpToDate recommends nitrofurantoin, also known as macrobid, and trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, also known as Bactrim. Nitrofurantoin and trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole are the most commonly used. Fluoroquinolones can also be used as alternatives according to UpToDate, but it's best to use them for other uses besides acute cystitis. If we check Hippocrates, you'll see the same antibiotics are recommended. They recommend fluoroquinolones when there is suspected or known antibiotic resistance. And first consult basically verifies that the medications we've mentioned so far are the most commonly used. Okay, now let's talk about cost for a second. <clears throat> 
Nitrofurantoin for the minimum treatment of five days at 100 milligrams BIV is $33. For trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, 160 milligrams of trimethoprim, 800 milligrams of sulfamethoxazole. Minimum treatment of three days BID is $18. And then Cipro, 250 milligrams BID for three days is $2.34. We're not going to spend too much time talking about adverse reactions. It's difficult to get quantitative data on the risk of adverse reactions, but there is this famous side effect of lower quinolones, which is the Achilles tendon rupture or tendinitis. And I just wanted to ask the question, what's the magnitude of this risk? If we look at this particular study that was published in the Journal of Clinical Pharmacology in 1999, there were almost 2,000 users of fluoroquinolones. The average duration was nine days. There were seven cases of tendinitis or Achilles tendon rupture, which is a 0.4% risk of either one of those outcomes. So the risk is very small, but it was still twice as great as the risk of an Achilles tendon rupture or tendinitis with the other comparable antibiotics. So it's definitely something to consider. So looking at some risk factors for either of those outcomes, Achilles tendon rupture or tendinitis, these are things that you should probably be thinking about before you recommend a fluoroquinolone to your patient. Okay, let's quickly review here. Remember that the concentration of the infection counts because it can give you a sense for whether there was bacteria growing because of a dirty catch or contamination or whether there was truly an infection. Disregard the minimal inhibitory concentration numbers. They don't mean very much for us in terms of selecting an antibiotic. Just pick one that's going to be sensitive for all the organisms that grew. Remember that these are the three most common medications and that Cipro should probably be reserved for cases of suspected uh, antibiotic resistance. As far as cost is concerned, Trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole is half as expensive as nitrofurantoin, but your patient may be allergic to sulfa, so don't forget to check their allergies. Avoid Cipro if you can due to the relatively higher rates of the Achilles tendon rupture or the tendinitis. And that's it. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Please let me know if you have any feedback. Thanks.